Today we're diving into the beauty and wonders of Belize, a hidden gem in Central America that is just waiting to be explored. For seven years, I helped tourists plan their trips to Belize. And in this ultimate travel guide to Belize, I'll share some important travel info for planning your trip to Belize, including top destinations to visit and must-do activities. By the way, if you want to see more experiential travel vlogs from Belize that show you exactly what to expect, then check out the videos in the description below. Let's start with a brief overview. Belize is located in Central America and is bordered by Mexico to the north and Guatemala to the west and the south. The country is renowned for its incredible biodiversity. It's home to pristine beaches and the second largest reef system in the world, as well as lush jungles that are filled with exotic wildlife and breathtaking waterfalls. And let's not forget about the awe-inspiring Mayan ruins. But beyond the nature in Belize, you'll also find warm and welcoming Belizean people who come from really diverse backgrounds creating a vibrant melting pot of cultures. When traveling to Belize, make sure that you have a valid passport with at least six months of validity remaining. Make sure to check visa requirements based on your nationality. The official language is English, and the local currency is the Belizean dollar, but US dollars are also widely accepted. The current exchange rate is two Belizean dollars to one US dollar. Belize has a very tropical climate, so pack lightweight and breathable clothing along with sun protection. It's also recommended to drink bottled water and take precautions cautions against mosquito bites due to the presence of mosquito-borne illnesses. The best time of year to visit Belize is during dry season, which runs from late November to April. This period offers pleasant temperatures between 75 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit, as well as lower humidity and minimal rainfall, making it ideal for outdoor activities. Dry season does align with peak tourist season, so you can expect vibrant festivals, bustling markets, and a lively atmosphere. If you prefer a quieter experience and you don't mind the occasional rain shower, the shoulder seasons of May to June and September to October can also be good options to consider as well. How long you stay in Belize depends on your travel and activity preferences, but a typical trip ranges from about 7 to 10 days, which allows just enough time to visit popular destinations like the coastal islands and the inland areas of San Ignacio. However, if you want more extensive exploration, then consider extending your trip to two weeks or even more. There are several ways to get to Belize. The most common way is by flying into the Philip S. W. Goldson International Airport, located just outside of Belize City. If you're in a neighboring country like Mexico or Guatemala, you can also reach Belize by land. There are many bus services that operate between Belize and these countries. Cruise ships often include Belize as their port of call, allowing travelers to visit for a day and explore some popular attractions. And there are also ferry services available from neighboring countries like Mexico and Honduras. Now, once you arrive in Belize, there are several transportation options. Belize has a well-connected network of domestic airports, making air travel a convenient option for getting to different regions. Tropic Air and Maya Island Air are two popular airline services. Belize also has an extensive bus network that connects various towns and cities. The buses are by far the most affordable way to travel around the country. There are also taxis that are readily available in most large towns and cities, and they can be hired for short trips or day tours. Renting a car also gives you the flexibility to explore Belize at your own pace. There are several international car rental companies that have offices in Belize cities and most tourist destinations. If you're visiting the coastal islands like Ambergris Key or Key Cocker, water taxis are a convenient mode of transportation. These boats operate very regular schedules between the mainland and the islands for a pretty reasonable price. Now let's go over the top destinations to visit in Belize. Most people arrive into Belize City by air or by bus. Belize City does have a higher crime rate compared to the rest of the country, and some areas are quite dangerous. Our local hosts in Belize have always warned us to spend as little time in Belize City as possible, and that's what we recommend to tourists as well. From Belize City, we recommend that first-time visitors of Belize to go to three places in particular, the coastal islands of Ambergris Key and Key Cocker, and the inland town of San Ignacio in the Cayo District. This itinerary gives you a taste of the tropical Caribbean islands, as well as the lush jungles that are home to Mayan ruins. So it's kind of the best of all worlds. So Ambergris Key is the largest island in Belize. Its main town, San Pedro, is located on the southern part of the island. Most people arrive here via a 90-minute water taxi from Belize City or via a domestic airplane flight. The island has a low-key, laid-back Caribbean vibe, and it's not overly commercialized. In fact, most people get around here by driving golf carts or riding bicycles. 
But the key draw to this island is that less than a mile away is the Belize Barrier Reef, the largest reef system in the Northern Hemisphere and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So diving is a top activity here. Snorkeling at the Holchan Marine Reserve and also swimming with sharks at Shark Ray Alley are also a must do. And don't forget to try water sports like kayaking, parasailing, and jet skiing. While you're in the islands, I definitely recommend indulging in fresh local seafood like ceviche and lobster and conch whenever they're in season. In terms of accommodations, you'll find budget hostels, international hotel chains, and all-inclusive beach resorts here. There's also lots of expats. Most of the expats that come to Belize end up in Ambergris Key. Nearby is the tiny island of Key Cocker, a budget-friendly alternative to Ambergris Key. Less populated and popular among those who want a super slow, relaxed vibe, Key Cocker is worth stopping here for a night or maybe even a day trip from San Pedro. You can get here by water taxi in about 45 minutes from Belize City or even faster via a domestic plane ride. It's only five miles long, so it's very easy to circle this island by foot, bicycle, or golf cart. Like Ambergris Key, the main draw to this tiny island is water sports, and you can do all of the same water activities. The most popular spot on the island is called the Split, which is named after a channel that divides the island into two. Now, while most people come to Belize seeking tropical beaches, if you really want to immerse yourself in rich Mayan heritage and explore the lush jungles, then you've got to head inland to the Cayo district. San Ignacio is the main town here, and you can get here from Belize City by domestic airline, which is the fastest way, a two-hour private taxi, or a three-hour bus ride, which is the cheapest way. Downtown San Ignacio offers many accommodations, restaurants, and a Saturday farmer's market. You'll notice that the culture here is distinctly more Latino than it is on the coast, which is more Caribbean. Still, nearly everyone here speaks fluent English, so it's very easy to communicate. For most visitors, the main draw to this area are the ancient Mayan ruins. Unlike the popular Mayan ruins in nearby Mexico, all of the ones in Belize can still be climbed on foot. So the first site you should visit is called Cajalpech, which means Place of the Ticks in Maya. It's a small Maya site that is just a 10 minute walk away from downtown San Ignacio. It has a calming natural atmosphere and is usually not too crowded. Zanantinich Mayan Ruins is the most popular and iconic Maya site in Belize. Getting here is a 30 minute drive from downtown San Ignacio, and it includes a ride on a hand cranked ferry over the Mopan River. Zanantinich, which means Stone Woman consists of four groups of buildings, the tallest being El Castillo, which is 130 feet high. The entrance fee is about five US dollars and hiring a guide is highly recommended if you want to get the full picture of this really big Mayan site. It's also a very popular spot for tour groups, so expect periodic crowds. The largest Maya temple in Belize is Caracol. It's a two hour drive away from San Ignacio and it is best done with a tour guide or a group to get the full experience since the site is also near Mountain Pine Ridge. More on this later. Caracol was one of the most important political centers in the Mayan overlands, and it once had a larger population than modern day Belize City. Its largest building is more than 140 feet high and it is the tallest man-made structure in Belize. Plan to visit Caracol earlier in the day because military escorts to the site are needed due to recent robbery incidences. Mountain Pine Ridge Forest Reserve is best visited in combination with Caracol, as they're located pretty close to each other. This scenic area is best for enjoying outdoor activities like hiking, swimming, and bird watching. There are two popular stops. Rio Frio Cave is a natural cave with a 65-foot arch at the opening, so it's really impressive. But once you get inside, it's just a mile and a half in length. So it's really ideal for those that are new to caving. Also, the Rio on Pools is a nearby river area with lots of small waterfalls and natural pools. So it's ideal for swimming and enjoying natural water slides. Most of these caving experiences are geared toward beginners, but if you're an experienced caver or you want something that's a little more hardcore, then I definitely recommend checking with the local tour companies to see if they can put together a more extreme itinerary for you because there are quite a few caves in this part of Belize. One of such caves is called ATM Cave or Actun Tunikil. Muknal. I probably butchered that, so ATM cave it is for me. 
It was once used for sacrifices. So this cave is home to over 1,400 artifacts, including the Crystal Maiden, a young female skeleton that is still intact. ATM Cave is a wet cave that requires a swim to the mouth and also wading through water that gets up to chest high before you get to the dry part of the cave, which you explore by foot. For this reason, there's a lot of physical endurance that's needed to explore it, and it's an all-day adventure that requires a guide, so it's really not for the faint of heart. I was brave enough to do ATM Cave once, but they did not allow cameras at the time. So I don't have any photos or videos to prove it, but I can tell you that it's absolutely worth the effort if you're interested in trying it. The final activity that I recommend doing while you're in San Ignacio is going over to Tikal Mayan Ruins. So this is actually located in Guatemala, and the Guatemala border is really close to San Ignacio. So it's very easy to do as a day trip. And Tikal, if you haven't seen it, it is just the most impressive, biggest, Mayan structure that I've ever seen, it is definitely worth the trip out. I mean, Caracol in Belize is pretty impressive, but Tikal is like way up there on the list. And I actually recommend not just doing it as a day trip, I recommend spending the night because there's a nearby town called Flores and it's such a cute little town. It's got a little lake on it. So I'd recommend going over to Flores, spending the night and then getting up early and doing Tikal first thing in the morning at around sunrise. And then you can head back to Belize after that. So there you have it. This is my ultimate travel guide to Belize as a first timer. Now, obviously Belize is a really large and varied country, and there's obviously more to see and do than what I've talked about here in this video. But if you're visiting Belize for the first time and you have about seven days to spare, I think that focusing on these things that I mentioned in this video will give you the best of the coast and the mountains and show you some of the main highlights of this beautiful country. As always, let me know in the comments if you have any questions and please like and share this video if it helps you out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.